YouTube. Today I'm the Naughty Librarian. I'm bringing you a little bit of a romance book haul. Two things. One, I went to a used bookstore and I got a few books. I kind of hit the jackpot a little bit. Just go with me on it. <laughs> One of them I'm just, I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> I also got a new box from My Guilty Pleasures Book Crate. I really like getting my smutty delights in this box. However, side note, um, they are taking a bit of a break. There's health issues going on, whole lot of stuff. My code still works, I'm a rep, so you can use it for the website, but subscription boxes, there's gonna be a bit of a pause for a minute. But anyway, let's get into the box. Let's see my smutty delights. Oh, cookies! <laughs> Every box you get like a sweet treat. You know, it's just like candy or, or some type of snack you know it's just like a little snack to eat and this one's is the chocolate brownie grandma cookies I haven't had grandma's cookies like in a minute like oh man I, I used to live off them in college <laughs> there were whole weeks I ate nothing but vending machine food because that's all I had was pocket change so who brings me back <laughs> oh I got this pretty little pin I'm not sure what book it's from it says Shannon Hale um, get sucked into your favorite book, literally. I guess maybe maybe the book name is kind of a big deal, but um, it's glittery. It's a nice like enamel pin, and I just like it in general because you know, kind of a big deal. <laughs> I also got like a bunch of little cool art prints. I got this one. Um, Greetings from Sebor. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. And everything's on fire. This is from uh, the Merciful Crow, which I did read. I I didn't find it extremely great, but I thought it was very decent. You know, it wasn't my fave, but like it had elements that I thought were well done. So hey, that's cool. And also, I just everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's on fire. So. Oof. I think we all know how that feels. <laughs> then I got a bunch of little ones, and these are like kind of like romance novel trading cards. And this one, oh, it's a magnet. I like smutty magnets. Um, this is Possessive by W. Winters. I have not read anything by the author, but now I have a magnet to put on my fridge. And these are all books by um, Darcy Burke. So Never Love a Scandal, To Love a Thief, and Scoundrel Ever After. Like, they're like baseball cards but for you know romance novels I love it oh wait they have those little like weird codes in the back that you scan maybe they come with like a free book like the maybe it, this is like for the the ebook I'm not sure I'm gonna I'm gonna have fun with barcodes later oh a candle oh this one's pretty it's got like this cherry blossom print on it and this is Sakura Dreams which is cherry blossom white jasmine and Citrus, I couldn't read. <laughs> and this is by Geeky Girl. I can, the font is a poor choice. It's really difficult to read, but yeah. So it's a pretty little candle with all of this like cherry blossom stuff on it. Glitter, <laughs> there's glitter too. Always glitter. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I guess citrus maybe. Like honestly, it smells like bubble gum. It, it straight up is bubble gum. <laughs> like a gumball. It smells like maybe like a like a citrusy gumball. I mean, it is pink, so I guess it goes there. I just, I wasn't expecting bubble gum smell, but this is super cute. I like it. Oh, shit, I got sunglasses. I've never actually gotten a pair of sunglasses, like, in a book box, and it has UVI protection. It says, my guilty pleasures, and now I could be cool. <laughs> Now for the books, I got a copy of Lady Wicked by Scarlett Scott. I guess this is the fourth book of this series. This is Notorious Ladies of London. Yeah, book four. I, I could have just read the cover. I don't know why I can't read today. So this one is Twisty Turny Angstiness. This is Juliana and Sydney. Juliana, she's a she's a young woman and um, she, she loses her innocence <laughs> to her friend's brother. And then like, I guess he breaks her heart and she runs away from London. She's like, I need to like recover. And then you have Sydney who, uh, he's Lord Shelbourne. And um, I guess, I don't know, he wants revenge because she like spurned him. She, I guess she turned down his offer of marriage, which is weird because how did her heart get broken? She turned down his offer of marriage. I don't know. And then she comes back to his life and she's in trouble and he, he needs to fix it. And there's a shocking secret. And I'm assuming that means baby. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, I'm thinking it's a, it's a secret baby book. Not my fave trope, but um, I don't know. I'll try it out. I think this is definitely an indie published one. Yeah, it's definitely an indie published book. So that's cool. I mean, her hair is fantastic. Like, tell me her hair isn't wicked cool. Oh, my word, you guys. It's signed, and it's signed to me. <laughs> oh, that is stepping up the game. Like, usually you get, like, a signed book plate, but this is actually signed by the author to me. Holy smokes, that's really nice. Oh, I feel special. <laughs> I also got a copy of The Anti-Relationship Year by Kate Wismer. This is book two of the Pact series. And this one, I also got a signed book plate, but signed to me. Wow, stepping up your game. That's fancy, I like it. <laughs> So uh, this one, super angsty again. This is Joanna. She, um, I don't know, she went to college. She had like a traumatic experience in her freshman year. And now she doesn't do relationships. She just wants something fun and light and easy. And then her best friend Miller is the guy who's been with her throughout all this, like drunk 4 a.m. calls, needing a ride, etc. She's a hot mess. And like, I think he knows what happened. Like he has memories that she doesn't have. And like, there's like some drama here and and, they, and then I, I guess she needs to like heal. <laughs> I don't know, this one's just gonna be angsty as shit. And it's like a college age kind of romance. I think they're like seniors in college. And oh boy, this one is gonna be, this one's gonna be like a tearjerker. I feel it, like I feel it. <laughs> Okay, so that was it for my Guilty Pleasures book crate. And overall, you know, I got some cute stuff. I like that pin. I like the candle, even though it's like bubblegum dreams. I got sunglasses, which are sweet. And then like books, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. So yes, use my code. It's MGPLibrarian10 if you want to get 10% off anything on the site. Again, she's going to be taking a bit of a break for health purposes. We can all respect that at this time in our lives. So yeah, she's gonna be taking a bit of a break, but there are still things on the website available for purchase if you want, and my code still works. Okay, let's get into the used bookstore I went to. Now this book, I got it for free actually, because outside of the bookstore, they had like a couple boxes and they're like, just take them. <laughs> so I went through it and they had like, you know, the really old romances and I found one in there that I was like, Chef's kiss. <laughs> what it was is Pirates by Linda Blayell Miller. And I know that's not the correct pronunciation for this title, but I can't not say it that way. <laughs> so Pirates is about this woman and her name is Phoebe and she's in Seattle and she's just trying, you know, to forget the guy she just divorced and her poor financial situation and lonely nights. Woe is me. <laughs> And then you have Duncan Rourke, who is known to historians as the Pirate Patriot. He's been dead for two centuries, or at least he's supposed to be, until Phoebe Turlow steps out of a van and into a rundown island hotel and into his world. So there's this lady, she's a divorcee, and then she steps into pirate land. <laughs> I don't know how the time continuum functions here, but like, Pirates! Like, <laughs> this is just funny to me, but I can't not say it that way. So this is a funny book for me. You know, sometimes you just have to do something for yourself and this is it for me. <laughs> okay, so the rest of these books I did buy because they are considerably higher quality. <laughs> but, um, yeah, let's go. First things first, I got a copy of The Key by Lindsay Sands. Oh my word! I literally just grabbed it at the bookstore and I didn't even read the blurb. I just saw Lindsay Sands, so I bought it because I didn't have this one. And you guys! <laughs> okay, so there's this woman, Ileana Wildwood. Uh, already fantastic romance name. And she doesn't want to marry this unscrupulous baron. So she goes off and she marries a barbarian instead. So she marries uh, Duncan, who is laird to Dunbar Castle. And she really thinks he's hot and stuff, but she won't let him into her bed until he becomes more civilized. She sounds like a real piece here. However, here's the kicker, Ileana. She has something up her sleeve or perhaps under her skirt that will help her avoid temptation. The girl's got a literal chastity belt. What? I've never had an actual chastity belt in a romance before. So like the key, he's gonna unlock her vagina. 
I'm, I don't, I didn't, what? I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna be so ridiculous and possibly bad, but like those ones that are so bad that they flip back around to good because they're so campy. Like this is a literal chastity belt, guys. Like, you heard that right. Oh my, I'm so excited now. Oh, I gotta, I gotta get into this. He's gonna unlock her vagina. I'm, I'm so into it. <laughs> I also got a copy of The Countess by Lindsay Sands, and this is actually a book that I really, ooh, look at that step back. <laughs> oh, that is a good smutty tap. Okay, so I actually really, really wanted this book and they happened to have it, so I was like, win. This is the first book of a series that I've read the second book of already. So um, the second book, it starts off with them trying to hide a body. So, I mean, where did this body come from? I feel that there's a lot of backstory I wasn't privy to. <laughs> and this is actually the backstory where this body comes from. I'm just gonna read the first sentence here because it's, it's great. The fairy tale courtship did not turn into a happily ever after. Not until her husband dropped dead, that is. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, mind you, I have read book two, so I kind of know what happens here. Um, this guy is very charming and he's like, oh, you should marry me, la la la. And then she does and then he turns out to be a piece of shit. His name is Richard. And so she's unhappy in this marriage, very much so. Low key, I think Richard was actually more attracted to men, I think we found out in book two. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure because like, of course, she's like a married virgin because of course. <laughs> but anyway, so Richard... Here you go, evil twin. What? There's another twin. There's another guy and they're identical twins, but he's the evil one. And the real Richard, he comes back and he's just like, wait, wait, I'm married? Who am I married to? So he was, he's married to her legally because it's his name on all the papers, but he didn't marry her. And then he's trying to like step into that life because that guy's dead. And he's just like, oh shit, like, oh, oh boy, if he's dead, then I could just be Richard now because we're identical. So he's still alive and he's me, but not. <laughs> that makes no sense. But yeah, they're trying to hide a body. There's an, there's an evil twin situation. And a lot of this book I think is happening concurrently with a lot of the events that happened in book two. So it's just, it's painting a, a, a more vivid picture for me. So now we understand why there's a body, <laughs> but um, I'm excited. I really wanted to read it. I did like book two enough. I thought it was very clever. So I, I wanted book one and they happen to have it. Last book up here. I also got a copy of Hit Me With Your Best Scott by Suzanne Enoch, mainly, I like the title. <laughs> Hit me with your best guy. Love it. Print, copy, buy it. I want it. Okay, I'm gonna read you the first sentence because, oh boy, this is like just trope city. Cole McTaggart, Viscount Glendarell, is a big brawny Highlander who doesn't like being told what to do, not even by his exasperated English mother who is determined to see her eldest son wedded and bedded. Hold my words. <laughs> anyway, so he comes to the rescue of this lady, Persephone. Her name's Persephone Jones. Again, excellent romance name. And of course, she's a lady in hiding. She has secrets. She has mysteriousness. She's a little famous because of scandal, probably. And you know what? Someone's trying to kill her. So he's just like, well, I'm going to marry this lady and stop a murder plot. Like, those are the best historical romances. I just want campy murders. <laughs> That's too much to ask. <laughs> All right, so those are a bunch of like cool new romances I got recently. I like hit the jackpot at a used bookstore. Sometimes it's hard to get good ones, but like I guess they must have just got some books recently. So yeah, these are in really good condition except for Pirates, which is super old and I can't not say it that way. Let me know in the comments down below, um, what's the craziest trope you have seen in a historical romance? Cause you guys, we got our first chastity belt, everybody. Like. Have you seen one before? Because I have not. <laughs> if you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye! -bye.